Do you want to invest in the stock market, but you're afraid of the tax consequences? Do you wonder how much taxes you have to pay on your gains or losses? Do you feel confused by terms like capital gains, dividends, and tax brackets? If you answered yes to any of these questions, then this video is for you. In this video, I'll explain the basics of taxes on stocks for beginners who know nothing about taxes. I'll also give you some tips on how to reduce your tax bill and keep more of your hard-earned money. Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel, where I teach you how to make money in the stock market. In today's video, I'm going to explain the basics of taxes on stocks for beginners who know nothing about taxes. This is a very important topic because if you don't understand how taxes work, you could end up losing a lot of money to the IRS and nobody wants that, right? So if you want to learn how to invest in stocks without paying too much taxes, then keep watching this video. I'll show you how taxes on stocks are calculated, what factors affect your tax rate and how you can reduce your tax bill and keep more of your hard-earned money. Trust me, this will save you a lot of headaches and money in the long run. But before we get started, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any of my future videos. I post new videos every week where I share with you the best tips and tricks on how to make money in the stock market. All right, let's get into it. Before we dive into the details, let me tell you a story. Imagine that you're Alice, a 25-year-old who works as a graphic designer. You earn $50,000 a year, and you want to save some money for your future goals You've heard that investing in the stock market can be a good way to grow your wealth over time. So you decide to open a brokerage account and buy some shares of your favorite companies. You're excited to see your portfolio grow as the stock prices go up and down. But then at the end of the year, you receive a letter from the IRS. It says that you owe taxes on your stock investments. You're shocked and confused. How did this happen? What did you do wrong? How much do you have to pay? And how can you avoid this in the future? Don't worry, Alice. I'm here to help you understand what's going on and what you can do about it. Let's start with the basics. There are two main types of taxes that you need to know about when it comes to stocks. Income tax and capital gains tax. Income tax is the tax that you pay on your regular income, such as your salary, wages, tips, interest, and more. Capital gains tax is the tax that you pay on the profit that you make when you sell a stock for more than you bought it for. For example, if you bought a stock for $10 and sold it for $15, you have a capital gain of $5 and you have to pay tax on that. The amount of tax that you pay depends on several factors, such as your income level, your filing status, your holding period, and the type of stock. Let's look at each of these factors in more detail. First, your income level. The IRS divides your income into different ranges called tax brackets and assigns a different tax rate for each bracket. The higher your income, the higher your tax rate. For example, in 2024, if you're single and your taxable income is between $10,275 and $40,125, you're in the 12% tax bracket. But if your taxable income is between $40,126 and $85,525, you're in the 22% tax bracket. This means that you pay 12% tax on the income that falls within the first bracket and 22% tax on the income that falls within the second bracket. You can find the tax brackets for your filing status on the IRS website. Second, your holding period. The IRS distinguishes between short-term 
and long-term capital gains, depending on how long you hold a stock before selling it. If you hold a stock for less than a year, you have a short-term capital gain. If you hold a stock for more than a year, you have a long-term capital gain. The difference is important because short-term and long-term capital gains are taxed differently. Short-term capital gains are taxed at the same rate as your regular income tax. Long-term capital gains are taxed at a lower rate, which can range from 0% to 20%, depending on your income level. For example, in 2024, if you're single and your taxable income is less than $40,400, you pay 0% tax on your long-term capital gains. But if your taxable income is between $40,401 and $445,850, you pay 15% tax on your long-term capital gains. You can find the long-term capital gains tax rates for your income level on the IRS website. Third, the type of stock. The IRS also treats different types of stocks differently for tax purposes. One common type of stock that you may encounter is a dividend-paying stock. A dividend is a payment that a company makes to its shareholders, usually on a quarterly basis, as a way of sharing its profits. Dividends are considered income, and they are taxed at the same rate as your regular income tax, unless they are qualified dividends. Qualified dividends are dividends that meet certain criteria, such as being paid by a United States corporation or a foreign corporation that is eligible for a tax treaty with the United States. Qualified dividends are taxed at the same rate as your long-term capital gains, which is usually lower than your regular income tax rate. You can find out if your dividends are qualified or not by looking at the Form 1099 Div that your broker sends you at the end of the year. So, how do you calculate your taxes on stocks? The basic formula is, taxes on stocks equal income tax on dividends, plus short-term capital gains tax, plus long-term capital gains tax. To calculate your income tax on dividends, you need to add up all the dividends that you receive during the year and multiply them by your regular income tax rate. To calculate your short-term capital gains tax, you need to add up all the profits that you made from selling stocks that you held for less than a year and multiply them by your regular income tax rate. To calculate your long-term capital gains tax, you need to add up all the profits that you made from selling stocks that you held for more than a year and multiply them by your long-term capital gains tax rate. Then, you need to add up all these taxes and that's the amount that you owe to the IRS. And that's it, folks. That's the basics of taxes on stocks for beginners who know nothing about taxes. I hope you learned something new and useful from this video. And I hope you feel more confident and prepared to invest in the stock market without paying too much taxes. Of course, there's a lot more to learn about taxes on stocks, such as how to deal with different types of accounts, how to optimize your tax strategy, and how to avoid common tax mistakes. If you want to learn more about these topics, then make sure you check out my other videos where I go into more depth and detail on how to make money in the stock market. Also, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I love hearing from you and I always try to reply to as many comments as possible. And if you have any requests for future videos, let me know what you want me to cover next. Finally, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends, family, and anyone else who might benefit from it. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any of my future videos. I post new videos every week where I share with you the best tips and tricks on how to make money in the stock market. With that said, 
Thanks for watching and until next time.